Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Hello, and welcome to Frontline Rejects. If you're a returning viewer, glad to see you again. If you're a new viewer, we're very happy to have you joining us. First things first, we'd really appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like or subscribe button. Now that that's taken care of, let's get into some expansion testing. The bullet we're testing today is the 120 grain Nosler Ballistic Tip. This is the fourth time we featured it on the channel, and we will feature it once more as part of our five cartridge comparison. We've got it loaded up for our Savage Axis and 6.5 Creedmoor, and with our current loading we should be seeing somewhere around 2900 feet per second. Of course this is a non-bonded controlled expansion round, and we're very excited to see how it will perform. So let's get started. If you'd like to connect with us, you can find us on Getter at Frontline Reject or on Gab at Frontline Rejects. Or drop us an email at FrontlineRejects at gmail.com. Ganked him? Ganked him. Dead on. Ganked him. Yeah. I'd go for the right row of jugs. Okay. Alright. You're not gonna miss, are you? Uh we'll see. Probably gonna miss. Well you didn't miss. No, it looked like an impact. Yep. I think I got hit with some water from over here. Yeah, right in the splash zone. So what do you think about food later? Food? Yeah. Oh yeah, food sounds nice. I could murder a hamburger or two. Yeah, fries. No fries, I'm cutting. Yeah. Right jugs. Right jugs. As far as on, send it. Perfect. Nice. Alright, bro, this one's for the win. Yeah, dude, it's too cold talk shit. Fucking do it for Dale, dude. Do it for Dale. Wow, one ready. Now that shooting is complete, let's take a look at our results. What we've got going on here is in line with prior testing. At all ranges fired, we've got separation of the core and jacket, with some ranges also incorporating significant fragmentation. At 100, the jacket peeled back well over halfway down the shank, and what we could find at the core lost significant weight and pancaked. At 200, the jacket performed almost the same. We found a few more chunks of the core, and the largest piece retained a bit more weight. This trend continues at the 3 with expansion ending higher up the shank and the core retaining more weight. We were able to find more pieces at further ranges because as the bullet shed velocity upon impact, it sent particles into a smaller area. The jacket at 400 is similar to the jacket at the 300, and we have some particulates from the core. At the 500 we have decent expansion. The jacket quit peeling near the top of the shank, and we do have core separation with okay mushrooming. The round basically tore itself to shreds at almost all ranges fired. The graphs are interesting. Expansion stayed within a pretty even distribution, while weight retention was all over the place. The expansion is of course a measure of how well the jacket expanded, so has somewhat lessened relevance when looking at rounds which are non-bonded or non-monolithic, but it's interesting to see how closely related the expansion among the jackets is. Weight retention increases from the 1 to the 3 pretty evenly, with lower velocity the round shed less weight, and at the 4 it drops drastically, probably because we were unable to cover the largest part of the core. At 500 we jump up to just over 2 thirds weight retention, and overall weight retention ends up being 58%. Now, I would never use this bullet on larger games such as mule deer, elk, bear, or moose, but on smaller to mid-sized game I think this bullet would shine provided correct shot placement principles are adhered to, which, considering the relatively high BC this bullet boasts in most calibers is very feasible. 
This is a great varmint rounded 5.56223, five, 6mm two or 243, and I think it's 6.5 and up, especially 30 cal. This bullet would be very effective on smaller deer like blacktail or whitetail. Cards on the table though, I haven't taken any deer with this bullet, so this is all just theorizing. The ballistic tip is never going to win any awards for penetration, but with behind the shoulder shots on deer, I think it would sufficiently penetrate ribs, and upon doing so, would tear itself apart and shred the lungs. Because it would tear itself apart instead of passing through, every bit of energy it's carrying would be dumped into the target. This would theoretically drop a deer very quickly and not give it an opportunity to walk off. The downside being you probably lose a bit of meat. I plan on putting this theory to the test next hunting season and hopefully I'll be able to get some good footage of that for all y'all. That said, my go-to hunting bullet is a TTSX. I don't usually use soft jacketed rounds like the ballistic tip and I prefer shoulder shots to behind the shoulder shots. If you've got something out of today's video, consider helping us out by hitting that like or subscribe button, and if you want to stay up to date on our content, hit that notification bell. We'll be featuring the ballistic tip once more, and afterwards we'll be compiling the results from all five tests into one video. We hope you'll join us then, but for now, thanks for watching, and goodbye.